Hey guys, Miku here, and I'm bringing you um, one of probably the most unique ukuleles that I've ever held and played um, in all of my sound sampling um, times. This is a custom or tenor custom Wolverton um, ukulele, and there's a lot of cool things going on with this instrument. But first and foremost, if you look at the overall theme, you can see that there's an overall theme, and what um, Wolverton ukulele was going for was basically it was trying to pay homage to the Native American Indian tribes um, featuring somewhat like of their artwork or drawing inspiration from their artwork. So if we start looking at um, just like the color scheme and the tone woods and like all the little, you know, ornaments all over the instrument, we start with the top of the instrument, which is Douglas fir. And this was the first time I've ever heard of that wood, never heard of it before, but this is what this um, sound top is or the top of this instrument, Douglas fir. And then if you guys notice that there is a slight um, sunburst, so you can see how it's dark around the perimeter of the instrument and then it gets lighter as it comes in the center right here. So really nice feature. Uh, we, all, we have this really cool F um, sound hole right here or an F, um, the F sound hole along with this regular sound hole. And if it looks familiar for some of you, it's because you can find it on like the, the arch top guitars. You can find it in cellos, violas, violins on, you know, those classical instruments. So really nice aesthetic touch along with the regular sound hole here. Um, we have a Brazilian rosewood like pick guard. And then we have literally a, a bear claw here. And I'll go into more details on that right in a bit. But here around the side, we have claro walnut, really nice, dark chocolate, creamy claro walnut here on the sides. And then even here on the back, and also on the back, you can see the slight sunburst here around the perimeter of the instrument. And so you can see like the cutoffs right around there, about an inch in, and then you can have that nice, again, dark chocolate, um, clara walnut. And then we have maple right here as a strip or the back end strip. And then we also is highlighted aesthetically, really nice, the dark and kind of whiteness um, color scheme with the curly walnut here on the back of the binding and then on the top of the instrument right here top binding so now coming back to the front of the instrument again we have um, native american indian um inspiration with the artwork right so up over here we have these symbols as the fret markers we have those same symbols like following that theme here around the rosette of the instrument and even here on the bottom on the bridge uh, right below the saddle so if we take a look at the different colors that we see this white part is maple um, this brown, like brown reddish color is Bloodwood. So we can see that artwork here. With this bear claw, we have ebony here in the middle, this black part. This white part with like the claws or the inside of the hands is maple. And then we have more Bloodwood as the actual outline of the bear claw itself. Here on the rosette, we have the Clara Walnut wood as the outside or, or like the, the actual rosette itself. And then the woods on the inside, again, you can see the white parts, which is the walnut. Oh, sorry, the, the maple. And then we can see the bloodwood here in these four little patches. And then even here on the bottom, we can see that design again, the bloodwood and then the, the maple. So really, really cool theme going on. And, you know, I just really like the aesthetic, the color scheme. Um, again, a Douglas fir, I've never seen this type of wood before, but it's really beautiful and it really matches the overall aesthetic of the instrument along with the really dark, creamy Clara Walnut on the sides and back and then, you know, popping out with the, the walnut on the bindings and even on this back end strip. Um, so really, really nice, uh, really, really cool. Here on the headstock, we also have a slight blood wood um, streak right here in the middle of the headstock running up. And then on the outside or the rest of the wood is the Clara Walnut. And then you can even see the Clara Walnut here on the back of the headstock, slotted headstock, of course. Um, paired really nicely with these nice Rubner tuners. And then even the pegs itself matches the overall, like the brown theme of the Clara Walnut, the Bloodwood, everything else that's going on in this, in this instrument. Um, another really cool thing that I don't think I've ever seen on an instrument before is that the, the headstock itself is, you can say, textured. So usually a headstock is like completely flat, but what's going on in this instrument is that, if you can see my finger, it kind of, there's an arch right here in the middle. Um, so a nice little texture thing when you, you can kind of rub your finger over it, like a little arch. Um, really cool. I don't think I've ever seen that on an ukulele before. And then we also have, I just noticed this right now, that we have a maple outline around the fretboard of the instrument. Um, 12 frets to the body. 
uh, very classical thing to do for an ukulele. Usually on a tenor size ukulele, it's common to have 14 frets and then the body, it meets the body. Um, so overall, yeah, this is a, it's a stellar instrument. It's, it's very, it's one of the most unique instruments I've ever seen and about to play for you guys. And it's just really beautiful. I really like the color theme, um, scheme theme. I really like it. Now going into the sound. Right off the bat, I can tell that it has a really warm sound. And I feel like that's probably what uh, Jason was going for in terms of sound, Jason Wolverton. Really nice for like if you want to do chords like this, especially like really nice like jazzier kind of chords. Really clean. Like look how crisp, look how crisp that, that A string is when I'm playing this A minor seven chord, this D seven. And I'm playing pretty. I mean, look how crisp that is. Really nice, you know. The thing with ukuleles is that the higher up the fretboard you go, the more likely it's gonna sound start to sound duller. It's gonna, you know, the sustain meaning like once when if I were to, you know, play a chord, like it's gonna die out really fast because you know there's not that much string to vibrate, right? So when you have less string to vibrate, you think the sound's just gonna, or usually the sound will just die off. But like you know, when I'm playing. Just so nice, has nice nice quality and sound. Nice to stay when I'm the the vibrato is really nice. Nice clarity. Although I would say the clarity is is not for me personally. I would want a little more clarity, but that's just my playing style. But for me, it's it's leaning more on the warmer side, so. That's also a good thing too, because if you have too much clarity, then it might not sound good tonally. Like it might, you know, it might jump out too much at you. It might not have that warm sound. So, but for this, it's leaning more on the warmer sound. But the good thing is that it's still really clean and really crisp. And really nice sounding. nice with these chords yeah, really nice a really nice artificial harmonic so yeah check out this instrument um, again it's one of the most unique instruments I've ever seen played really nice beautiful um the, in, the native american indian um artwork and theme and inspiration coming along this ukulele really nice sound is really nice and warm but again ukulele for me it really gets highlighted playing these nice chords especially when you're playing it So nice and clean and crisp and warm really too so go ahead and check out this instrument um, in this sound sample as usual I'm gonna go ahead and play what I feel or play where this instrument takes me and like I was saying earlier nice chord I like the sounds really nice with these chords so here we go Thank you. 
here's what this instrument will sound like with a little bit of strumming. Let's take it in. Let's take it in G. 